focus. Serious, 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 serious. Okay. Hey guys. So the last video I did, I forgot to tell you my name. Who are you? <laughs> my name is Sierra Cotton, and this is video number two in our Christian Basics series. Today we'll be talking about accountability, and I thought it'd be perfect to actually bring one of my accountability partners um, to actually kind of show you guys in a tangible way, in a way you can actually apply what it means to be accountable to someone else. So, um, what's your name, friend? I am friend, and I am... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm Stefina McKinley. Um, yeah. friend for friends for about a year now. Um, we hold each other accountable. Um, I met Stefina. I met her in uh, November of 2014. She was actually pregnant mm -hmm. with her daughter mm -hmm. Chloe. So I had heard a lot about her. I didn't, really, didn't had never met her though. And so she came and I was like, oh, you know, it's cool. We met her, it's cool. But like nothing really like popped off between us or anything. Like, we, she went back to Indianapolis and I was in Georgia. But then. Um, Tayshia and her husband started talking about how they were going to move here. I knew what it felt like to move from everything that's familiar and come to a new place. So I felt led by the Holy Spirit to kind of reach out to her and pray with her once a week in the beginning just to kind of give her reassurance of her move and of her pregnancy and just her life in general. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started praying. Oh, yeah. Well, our friendship um, actually... Sierra is the only friend that I would say, um, of course my husband's my friend as well, but Sierra is like my, the only friend that I have that we actually built a firm foundation on prayer, um, which was kind of weird to me because coming from where I was from, like prayer, you didn't, I mean, you heard about it when stuff was going wrong. Then you call your friends, your prayer partners and pray. But um, when stuff is going right, like you didn't really hear about your friends praying with you. Mm -hmm. So um Sierra and I, we started praying, and we built the strong foundation on yeah, our prayer. once a week. We started off once a week, and then yeah. that's when it started to grow more, where it's like, man, we need to pray every night, man. Mm -hmm. So then we started praying every night, and um, yeah, so then I moved here, and we became way closer. Uh, once I came here, it was like, she'll come watch Chloe, we'll hang out, we'll do different stuff like that, um, and we like legit hold each other accountable about discipleship and um this is actually one of the people that we um disciple she disciples us like we just all do life uh, together follow the mckinley's oh follow yeah the McKinley. McKinley. <laughs> i'll um, put a little uh little thing <laughs> ding 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 <laughs> you know what I'm the McKinley's. McKinley's. follow at the McKinley's. the one that i do life with um she holds me accountable um she gives me a lot of wisdom like you keep saying the word accountable. What if someone doesn't know what that word means? Accountable. How would you describe the word accountable? Okay. So accountability is the fact or condition of being accountable. So responsible. So um, basically she is the reason why I am not the reason why, but she holds me. Yeah, holding someone a, responsible to yeah, a responsible. certain level. Mm -hmm. And since we're Christians, that's to the Bible standards exactly. and God's word whether it be his rhema word which is the word that he speaks to us as individuals or his mm -hmm. logos word which is the bible mm -hmm. uh, i think one thing that we talked about was it like last week before last i was on the phone with her and i was like i she was talking about how she used to have a problem with kind of trusting women right. and being friends with them and i was kind of god kind of gave me a revelation when i was i was listening to some, some sermons and um and just studying my Bible about the reason why. Because our friendship is literally built on the Lord. Like, right. for real, for real. It's not a situational thing. I've moved to Texas five and a half weeks ago. We still talk every day. We're still as close as, as ever. Right. Um, because we we wasn't based on, oh, I serve in church with you. Oh, mm -hmm. I go to the same school as you. It was based on, no, we both serve the same God. We have the same mission. And so we're, we're constantly trying to push people towards Christ. We're trying to constantly disciple people we're kind of trying to constantly like make ourselves um more available to the lord and surrender exactly. more of ourselves to the lord and so um we have that in common yeah and so that's why our friendship works um she's not perfect i'm not perfect right. you know but i'm able to look past her imperfections because mm -hmm. the bible says that love covers a multitude of sins and i love her so whatever she does that offends me I'll just let her let it go. Like a lot of times I try to call her and I'm away now. She answers the phone. I could be like, well, you ain't my friend no more. I'm done with you because I called you six times a day and you didn't answer. And we joke around sometimes yeah. too. Like, i am like, I had heard from you all day for the whole year. Like, you know, but then it's like, I'm, I'm understanding. Yeah. And because I love her, I make allowance for her fault. She's going to do things that maybe aren't right. 
-hmm. in my eyes and it hurt my feelings or whatever yeah. but I'm still gonna love her through it I'm gonna bring it up to her attention of course but I'm not gonna hold grudges like hold it against her we need more unity in the body we don't need more people separating division, so yeah. and division yeah so yeah, and now we so, need to get into um, actual one of the scriptures that we were going to talk about um, that I believe our friendship mimics or it displays a lot is James 5 and 16. And it reads in the King James Version. <laughs> KJV. <laughs> Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another and that ye may be healed. The affliction fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. So... With that being said, as I stated earlier, our friendship was built on prayer. So, um, and she also mentioned, like, we'll call each other if stuff isn't right. Um, and that's exactly what this scripture is saying. Like, confess your faults one to another. So, if I do something wrong and I feel like, oh, man, I'm about to just beat down on myself. I don't want to get in the habit of just becoming, like standoffish to where I just lock myself in a room um and beat down on myself I call Sierra and I'm like girl this is what I'm dealing with mm -hmm. um, my attitude isn't right right now mm -hmm. like and she'll just listen and she'll tell me she'll give me wisdom and guidance as to what I need to do she would not just like oh girl you right you you did that right you should have went off she says no you're wrong you have to do this this way and she will also even say let's pray like and mm -hmm. that's what we need um in the body of Christ not some a whole bunch of yes mans in your corner but someone that would tell you when you're right and when you're wrong and not just put you on blast like oh Stefina called me and she said this and you right. know she was wrong but she'll tell me like hey sis that ain't right so um I believe that's a good stern foundation um to build a friendship off of as well um to, to make sure that you guys are confessing to each other your faults and not just and, letting it be and I know it's hard um I have a lot of people that say I wish you could hold like they wish I could hold them accountable and be their mm -hmm. accountability partner and stuff like that because they can't trust people in their church and stuff like that I know a lot of things go on in the church these days, and sometimes it seems like the world is more loyal than people in the church. Wow. Um, but that's not an excuse. Exactly. Um, and it's not, like, God is really able to bring people into life that you, that you need. He's going to bring the people. But pray. Yeah. If you feel like you can't trust anybody in your church, ask the Lord. Open my eyes so that older woman, that older man, mm -hmm. um, if you're a man, if you're a woman, then a woman don't. Try to, <laughs> try to have you, you single woman try to be accountable to a married man. We ain't talking about that. Okay, we're talking about single woman and maybe a married woman or a single woman and a married man with a, with, a, with a single man maybe or a married man. But no, don't try to, don't try to be like, yeah. oh, he my gambling partner. He just, no. Right, that. right. Um, that's going to be temptation. You don't got time for temptation. Okay. Exactly. But, um, just pray and really seek the Lord and ask him to show you, open your eyes to that woman, that man that can really be that person for you. And know that in the meantime, you do have the Lord, but God did not design for us to walk through this journey alone. We have right. to have people holding us accountable. Right. The more you isolate yourself, the more the enemy can tempt you. He can get you to, uh, start downing or start, start condemning yourself is the word right. I'm looking for. Condemning yourself to start, um, even falling from the faith because you just start going into a downward spiral and you feel like you can't stop and there's no one there. You really need someone to pick you up. When I first moved to Texas, and even still now, but her husband called me. She would call me. They would be on the phone FaceTiming me, texting me. How are you, sis? What are you doing? What's your prayer life like? Mm -hmm. um, and it helped me because I was kind of going down where I came from this whole community of friends and like people I call my family at church to just me sitting in my room. So it was easy for me to sit there and just watch netflix all day eat some chocolate yeah, chloe's joined us now um hey girl but it's easy to kind of be lazy right um but having her husband and, and her in my corner i know they're gonna call me know they're gonna say hey what have you been reading and so that kind of gives me motivation not saying i should need that motivation i should be disciplined in myself but I'm human. You know, we all have those seasons of our lives where we kind of like go up and down and we need someone to pick us up, which is why I love Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9. It says, two are better than one mm -hmm. because they have a good reward for their, their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who, who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Verse 11 says, again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can, be, how can one be warm alone? Mm -hmm. uh, though one may be overpowered by another, two with can, can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So, though we should be able to stand alone, you, you know, we have the Holy Spirit, we have the power of Christ living inside of us. We still need community. Even Jesus 
the perfect holy God right, right. still had his close circle of 12 yeah. and then even closer circle of the three. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which was, was it James, James, John, and Peter? James, John, and Peter, they're the ones who went Peter, to the mountain yeah, with him. It was Peter. Yeah. So, James, John, and Peter. He even had them. I don't know the, why I get Peter and Paul mixed with P names. Though. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he even Jesus had James, Peter, and Paul around him. So, you said Paul, too. James, James Peter, Peter, and <laughs> James, Peter, and John. She got me messed up. He had James, Peter, Peter and John, John here on the earth. That was his inner, inner circle. Mm -hmm. Um... So accountability definitely is important. It is. If you are a new believer and you don't have accountability, just keep praying. Like yeah. I said, keep praying, keep asking the Lord. It's a righteous desire to to have accountability. And the Lord's not going to sit there and be like, oh, I'm not going to give her accountability. Like, no, right. he's going to bring it eventually. And his timing, of course, may not come when you want it, Bill. Be there right on time. Hey. hey. <laughs> Another scripture in the Bible that talks about accountability is Proverbs 27, 17, which reads, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Uh, some versions say one, so a friend or so one man sharpens another. Um, and that's pretty much what accountability is doing. It's literally sharpening you. And a lot of times people actually run from accountability because they don't want to be sharpened. Sharpened. sharpened meaning having to grow, having to change, um, having someone point out their, your, the errors in your life. According to the Bible, this is not a, I'm tearing you down with my feelings and my emotions. Right. Um, cause I don't like what you do. No, it's not about like and dislike. This is about, no, my standard is the Bible. What you're doing, what you're saying is not lining up with God's word. Okay. And I care about your soul enough, enough to warn you mm -hmm. because there's always a warning before a fall. Exactly. And a lot of times people fall because they didn't take the heed to the warning. God always sends someone. The Bible was Jeremiah, it was Obadiah, it was Isaiah, it was Ezekiel. All these people sent to, to the, uh, the Israelites to, to, what is it? What's the word? Uh. They're the Israelites, I guess. Jerusalem, Ju Judah. The nation of Judah, the nation of Israel. He was sending all these warnings to them through the prophets. And they didn't heed the warning. And what happened? They fell to the Babylonians. So God's always going to send that warning. And we have to yeah. make sure that we're Take heeding those warnings. Yeah. That we're not grieving the Holy Spirit. Uh, may not always be something that the you, you get the notion. Maybe God shows someone else. And I, of course, test the Spirit by the Spirit. And what that means is, Pray and seek the Holy Spirit about the spirit that that person is bringing to you. Exactly. That word that person is bringing to you. Don't just take everything everyone's saying, but be open. Um, the Lord sends us these people into our lives for our good because yeah. He wants to see us grow into maturity of our of our salvation. But a lot of people they don't want to be checked. They yeah. don't want to be challenged. They don't want to change. And they don't want to grow. And you miss out. Like you miss out on truly becoming more like Christ. On being able to experience more of his presence, more of his power in your life. Because if you think in carnal and act in carnally, how are you going to expect for a holy God to get close to you? Exactly. He cannot. You have to be pure. You have to be reverent. And the only way you can do that is by allowing the process of sanctification mm -hmm. to occur. Uh, so don't expect your accountability... Bleh. <laughs> don't expect your accountability or accountability do not expect your accountability partner to be perfect like i said earlier Stephanie is not perfect i'm not perfect only one that is perfect is jesus exactly. only he's the one that can fill all your needs and your voids so make allowance for their faults as i said earlier um when they sin against you then confront them about it if something's bothering you but it's not based upon your feelings like they know they're not if they really love you they're not there to exactly. harm you they're not there to hurt you um, we're just human and we have a sinful nature. We have this flesh that we have to live in that one day I can, I can't wait to be done with this because it just, it sucks. Right. Um, having to battle the flesh and, and the spirit all the day long. It's just crazy. It's a struggle sometimes. And, um, they're not going to be perfect. So just make allowance for their faults. Just make sure that you truly, um, love them. Love them through whatever season they're going through. I think, um, I've had friends for years in the church. Um, I have, I have friends outside of Safina, but the one thing that sticks out to me about her is that she truly prays for me and she prays with me. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we tell this lie in the church. We like to say, oh, I'm, I'm praying, praying for, for you. you. Girl, I'm <laughs> praying for you. Blah, blah. And you know, you do not pray for that person. You go home and eat Krispy Kreme donuts and watch, watch TV. Your, <laughs> watch Netflix. Watching shows you probably shouldn't be watching in the first place. Did not go for God. That's another topic for another day. Yeah, yeah, our friendship works because we actually truly do pray for each other. We put each other's souls. Mm -hmm. above 
all else. Right. Like I'm care like I want her to go to attorney. I want her to stand before God and him to say, Well done, that good and faithful servant. I don't want her to get there and God say, Turn away from me. I never I knew. never knew you. You work of iniquity. I don't want it to happen. So I care more about her soul. So that means I have to tell her something that she doesn't like to doesn't want to hear, I'm gonna tell her. Right. Same thing with me. She can confront me about different things, like I don't know why you're doing this and yeah. you know, this not this isn't matching with the Bible and it may be a good or it could be a bad thing, it just depends. It just depends. But um, it's everything that gets me thinking, and I always go back to the Lord, and I seek the Lord about it. So don't let one bad friendship from your past, whether that friendship was in the church. We're going to let Chloe go play, y'all. Or not in the church. Um, don't let that one bad friendship from the past keep you from seeking an authentic friend inside um, the church now. Like This is a new day. God's mm -hmm. messages are new every single morning. Right, Chloe? I yeah, love you guys. Thank y'all for tuning in again. Look forward to our Thank you, video. Stefina, for um, for being a guest on my YouTube channel. Guys, I'm getting better at this, right? Because I'm, I'm not. I'm trying my best. So if you have any tips, any suggestions, any questions, any comments, feel free to drop them in the box below. Um, we love you guys. Love God bless you. And stay focused. Stay focused. Stay beautiful. What if they're a man? Stay handsome. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Love you.